Okay, and hello everyone. Thanks for attending ApacheCon. And good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to the people in the different time zone. My name is Ching Lan. I'm a software engineer inside of uh, Amazon Machine, Lear Machine Learning Group. And today I'm going to present the topic for deep learning in Java and everything with deep, deep lear learning and also Java language. Firstly, beforehand, I saw the people in the chat room saying they're not familiar with deep lear lear learning the concept. Let's go over the right hand graph first. So what is actually like a deep, deep, deep learning? You may be familiar with AI, like the AI application people tell in the, in the, in the normal re region from the basic concept uh, to do a simple dog and cat classification into the other tasks, like uh, they're, they're recognizing your handwritten digit or, or like the or like the, 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 the feature Snapchat and Instagram brings that can actually put in a dog face in your, in your face. These are all AI technology. And below that is actually the machine lear learning technology. It's a smaller domain inside of the AI because AI is very big. It contains the, uh, the basic rule-based system uh, stuff and also uh, the machine, lear machine learning task. And below the machine learning task is actually the deep learning region. And deep learning is a subset for machine, lear for machine learning. And typically machine learning can be categorized as, um, as supervised lear lear learning and also unsupervised. And deep, lear deep learning fall into the supervised learning by people feeding in the corresponding data and it can generate the rules. And uh, on the left-hand side, it's actually the, the, the development trend inside of our current uh, academia and also, also industrial field. So for the traditional pro, pro, pro programming side, uh, at the beginning, people building up the roles simply by defining uh, how, how, how you want to define this, by, by writing up even the simple if statement, they can say, if the people type in some kind of words, they're going to give them the corresponding answers. And this purely role-based system has been long, long lasting for the first generation AI applications. And, and, and surprisingly, and I have here even hear the rumors that people talking about Siri before 2012, they're also using the traditional programming by, by written up the cells and lines of rules by defining what, what the, the user trying to type and, uh, and, um, and talk when, when they're talking to, to the agent. And after that, uh, there are machine, lear machine learning technology. And it's a simply concept that people can having uh, the, the, the data and also answer uh, feeding the machine learning models and it can generate for the rules. It's a simple feeding algorithm. You can imagine uh, a simple algorithm like y equals to ax plus b. And by, 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 by feeding the corresponding x and y, they can use the feeding algorithm to find the best weight and bias inside of the, the, this algorithm. And, and, and the rules in here is, is corresponding to the, to the w to, to, to the weight and the bias. And by, by generating these kinds of the algorithm, they, by, by after that, they can just simply feeding up the, 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 the data inside and the algorithm will generate the, the best guess for the answers. And deep, lear deep learning is also using the similar terminology that doing the supervised learning by having this in mind. Um, I, I, I won't be going too much for the deep learning itself because uh, our major roles in here is, is all about the like deep learning itself Java. Uh, if you have any questions with deep learning itself, please raise your questions in the chat room and I will handle that after the session. And why Java for deep learning in our cases? And I saw there, there's actually like a trend inside of the enterprise customers while they're trying to use Java for their deep learning use cases, because most of the services in some world, they're actually building in some Java, like Tomcat-based services, and also the big data processing, like the people trying to use Apache Spark to solve their problem, and also the stream data processing uh, uh, problem, people are trying to use Apache Flink, and these are all built inside of the existing JVM domain. And also the, Existing Java uh, for existing Java API for deep learning is kind of painful uh, because mostly 
they're kind of low level APIs and also uh, it is kind of raw for them to use uh, is there there are broken pieces and uh, and the memory cost is very hard to 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 keep and also by having that Java API deploying your machine learning um, stuff inside of Java is also very challenging uh, because if you consider with prod environments you, you really need to uh, keep the environment safe without any kind of memory overflow or or or, or the the other issues like sec fault when you're trying to do the multi-threading inference or training task so it's the maintenance cost is also very high for the existing enterprise users they are trying to leverage on the java and the second problem is uh, there's there the deep learning standard in the java community um, they, they are actually one inside of Python right for now. There are people trying to uh, getting their API closer to the NumPy. But if you're trying to use a Java, like uh, when, when you're trying to run in the with the different Java machine learning or, and deep learning packages, you will find that the standard for, for for the Java is all is all different. And thirdly, deep learning with strongly typed languages, because uh, if you're trying to look into the code, especially written in Python, you will figure that the, the, the readability for the Python code isn't very good, because they 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 didn't provide us like the type of the of the the, the data set. Although we can infer that during the the, the runtime, but if you're considering with the Java service code, that the readability and the reliability is truly important, because we really don't want to make any mistakes before we throw that code into the product environment and running for hundreds of hours. Right. So by having that in mind, I'm going to introduce you to the, the, the toolkit that Amazon Web Services created called DeepDraw Library, trying to solve the problem with deep, 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 deep learning in Java. So like the reason that deep learning and the DeepDraw Library uh, came in, in here is because there are actually teams that Amazon, they ask us, if there is a single solutions we can write, we, we can use Java on, on in, in our prod system with all different kind of deep deep, deep learning framework, and they, they have spent days and even months to to build up their own Java API just to solve the problem to run inference with in, in their prod system, and that's the, and and that is the initial re reason why Deep Java Library came in here, and Deep Java Library is. Is, is simply designed for Java. It's support for multi-threading. It also has the memory control system and all the API signature are, are, de are developed into the Java friendly way where you, you, you can do everything inside the Java way and also having the benefit of doing everything that is actually for deep, lear deep learning task. And second benefit is we're following the Java standard like write, write once, run anywhere. We have a single layer front end API that applies to the all deep learning engine we currently support, like Apache MXNet, PyTorch, and TensorFlow. Whereas if you're trying to run a, an image classification task with, um, with, with the, let's say, with Apache MXNet, and if you're trying to switch into the, into the PyTorch, you barely need to change any part of the code. You only need to to, to change your your your, your, your de dependency import. And the same code can be run with different deep learning engine, and they will also have the same behavior. We also bring in something called Model Zoo. It contains 70 different pre-trained pre, 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 pre model out of the box where you can use them directly in your inference and training applications. And the models came from the variety of sources like Luan CV, Gluon NLP, and also um, Torch Hub, Hugging Face, and also Keras pre-trained Model Zoo. And Amazon has actively con contributed to the open source machine learning projects, including the following, like TensorFlow, MXN, and, 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 and PyTorch. By, 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 by learning from the community, we gradually understand well, what are the demand for the Java customers. And we finally built, built up the single layer deep Java library here, and also made it open source to benefit for the, for the all Java develop, developers and deep learning developers. And, and all the lessons we use inside is Apache 2.0 because we, we understand that the true open source that is actually fall under the uh, Apache lessons. And uh, we, we also supporting for different Apache projects, like uh, we, we have the packages installed inside of Apache Camel. We have a closed integration with Apache MXNet. And also we have the, the 
example integration with Apache Spark, Apache Flink, and Apache Nifi. And also there are upcoming other projects that are coming towards that we're, we're going to bring uh, to benefit for the whole Apache community. So now let's move on into the architecture for DeepDraw library. So firstly, DeepDraw library has a single layer Java interface that has been defined universal across different deep lear learning engines. So you, you can expect whatever you're going to write, you will have the same behavior across the different deep lear learning engine. And the first thing at first is called ND array. And ND array here, n-dimensional uh, array that representing some hard, hard dimensional data set instead of a Java, Java domain. The original array rep representation in Java is kind of weak if, if you're trying to use it to represent some complicated uh, use cases. And also we have some other stuff like model and inside of the model, is essentially you, you can load and train the model with the two classes that spawn from, from the model cases. So first thing called is trainer. You can train the model with trainer. And second thing is called predictor where you, you can run the inference with that. And also there's another key class that we call it block. It's actually the, con the container for the different neural, neural networks. But having these three, it, it, it builds up the whole building blocks for, for, for you to actually try to, to run the training and the inference with, with Java instead of deep, deep learning domain. And below that, we have the Java engine layer, which corresponding to the different uh, implementation inside of Java, uh, that's corresponding with uh, MXNet, PyTorch, and TensorFlow. And here, we, we, we're basically doing the translation work that are going to translate their original behavior to the universal behavior on the front end. And uh, below that, we have the C++ layer. We have built or used the corresponding uh, GNI and the GNA layers that are actually calling directly with the C and C++ API with, with different deep learning engine. This will ensure us to have the best uh, performance comparing to Python because we are all using the same and the same API in here. And it will also bring us the same behavior if you're trying to run the training and inference task comparing with Java and Python. And uh, we also support for different hardwares like Mac OS, Linux, Windows, and also even Android devices. And we support for both CPU and, and, and GPU use cases. And let's now move on to something that is really fun. Um, on the left-hand side, you can actually see it's an, it's an Android applications. It's a doodle draw application that trained from, 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 from the, the, the PyTorch with the Google Quick Draw data set. And it will actually recognize the, 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 the doodle you're, you're drawing on the screen. Like here, I'm drawing, I'm trying to draw like a, like a, like, like a rabbit in here. And uh, below that is actually pre presenting the, the inference result where, where we're trying try to, run, to run this kind of thing. And uh, surprisingly, the total inference code inside of this Android application, I mean, on the, uh, I mean the, the inference side is less than 20 lines of code. And it's also available from our demo site. And it's been running on the, on the Android device smoothly. And uh, to build up the, the, the DeepDraw library with the, with the AI application, it's very easy. Basically, you, you, you really need to have much more machine le learning experiences. We have the different packages ready for, for you to import. And also we have uh, are already provided different uh, pre-trained pre models where, and, 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 and even you can you use the model that is already trained um, by, by using some other sources and, and import to DeepDraw library for your own inference and training cases. So, and DeepDraw library also supporting for the advanced use cases such, such as the training. It has been designed for the engine uh, for the for the Apache MXset and, 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 and PyTorch. We have the fully data set that's supporting for both CVA and NLP training. Uh, similarly, we, we provide the different building blocks for the CV and NLP models. You can use the pre-trained model for the transfer learning or simply train from scratch. We also have the advanced feature like multi-GPU support. You can run with multi-GPU training and also the transfer learning uh, with, with your existing model. And, and apart from that, we also have the built-in metric system, which allow you to quickly collect the 
uh, the key information you want to get, like the speed of training, like the accuracy and the loss information. So these are crucial for the training use cases to get a better representation about what are the actual outcome of your training workflow. And before we, we jump into next sections, uh, we would like to introduce you some, some book that Amazon created uh, for the different use cases. So we, we, inside of the Amazon Science Team, we created the, the Dive into Deep Learning book. It, it contains 150 runnable Jupyter notebook from the model architecture to the applications inside of different CV and ALP use cases. It also uh, adopted as a textbook and the, and the reference book in the, at UC Berkeley, CMU, MIT, and 70 more university worldwide. It's very, it's been designed very easy to learn and people with no deep learning technology, they can, they can make a start in here by, by running with a Jupyter notebook as long and, and also following the flow that we, we want to teach about the different concepts. You will learn how you can create in like a simple uh, neural network, uh, like, like with, with a single layer and, and also to the modern, uh, like the convolutional neural networks with the CV application. And also it contains the NLP information. So now we also bring something similar. We, we, we're currently implementing the, it's a dive into deep lear learning, this book instead of Java. And I think it's also recognized the first Java book for the, for the deep learning in, in our use cases. And before the session started, I already put the link uh, in, the, in the chat room where we can check it out. And uh, we, we currently finish up the first seven chapters that all designed inside of Java, where you can use deep deep Java library along with the book to learn the basic use cases with deep, lear deep learning itself and also the Java technology. And we're trying to make this book as an industrial, industrial solution for the, for the deep learning use cases because for its simplicity, for its simplicity and also for it at once usages. You can check it offline after I can, I can also share the slides. Uh, you can check out this book. It's very, it's very useful. You can run it online and also locally with your own Jupyter notebook. So there's a lot of fun to do that. All right. And now let's move on to some real meat. How Deep Draw Library solved the deep learning solutions for the customer uh, production use cases. Before we jump into that, let's talk about the key advantages that Deep Draw Library actually bring. Firstly, it's very easy to set up. You, you, can, you, you, can use, you, you can just simply write 10 lines of code to run for your inference task. And uh, for, for sometimes it's usually last belong like 10 to 20 lines. And I would say most of the cases won't be more than 20 lines of code. Um, and it also has very, very minimum dependency requirements. You can expect if you want to try to use uh, MXNet, TensorFlow and, 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 and PyTorch, the total dependency for, for, for it to import is only two, three different packages with the total package size less than 200 max. And Deep Draw Library is designed to be very fast, especially on the Java service. It can get up to two times performance boost on some small mo model inference. And the terms for the small model in here means the, the model has less of the, less of the features such as squeeze net. We have benchmark on the squeeze net. It can bring us two to seven times performance boost if you're trying to run it on, on the server comparing to the existing model server solution. And this technology has been used widely by the as and query understanding inside of Amazon and also some small image classification from our external customers. And uh, be beside that, uh, Deep Draw Library also have the support for the large scale where you can run the offline da data processes with, with more than 800 million inference load with uh, Apache Spark uh, and, and on a cluster of, of machines. And, uh, and also, you can try to use Deep Draw Library with online streaming tasks, such as you, you can you, you can use Deep Draw Library as a as a middleware inside of uh, Apache Flink. Since it's a Java package, so you, you simply just import this package and do all the all, all the inference tasks. And we also provide the corresponding examples in our in our demo site where you can try you, you, you can try that to get the integration. And finally, the key reason that people choose Deep Draw Library is, is because it's very stable. We have doing the consistent uh, con con continuous inference call based on all different releases we're trying to bring there. 
with more than 100 hours benchmark tests. In the real production use cases, we really don't want things crash, right? If, if your inference or training service is continuous crashing, you won't be thinking that this is a re reliable solution you want to choose. So we, we want to keep it very stable. And the long lasting service we, we have been doing now has been lasting for more than 60 days um, with, without any problems. So let's jump into the first use cases by DeepJar library on Apache Spark. And uh, again, it has very mi mi minimum dependency requirements, which can actually save times once you're trying to run everything inside of your Spark machine. And apart from that, the multi-threading support now came into place because the, the Spark, they, they have been designed every part inside of the multi-threading. So you can leverage that benefit with DeepJar library. Since we already support that, you can use multi-threading with JVM instead of Spark. And, uh, and, and if you're trying to compare the DeepJar library solution, it's actually much faster than the multi-processing solution by leveraging, Spark, uh, by leveraging uh, PySpark on small models. And here we, we mentioned about small models again. So if you're talking about some large models such as the, the BERT model, it's usually like, 800 max to one to one gigs of memory and total inference cost will last around like 200 milliseconds. So we, we, we kind of having like 10 to 20 millisecond performance boost if you're trying to compare that. So it's a, the benefits is crucial inside of the small model side. And the uh, DeepDraw library is also designed to be very easy to use. You can leverage the, our plugin with HDFS and S3, you can load the model directly from these domains, so you don't worry about where you want to store the model and how you want to clean on the models. And this kind of stuff is being used by the Amazon Retail System and also the Chinese firm called Talking Data for Big Data Processing. So the story from the Amazon Retail System is before using DeepDraw Library, they spent like several weeks trying to fine tuning their, their, their models and, and, and to deploy into their inference service. And the total inference time is around like 24 hours. And by having deep drive library built in there, they can leverage with different deep learning model easily without it. And I mean, I mean, spending much of time in the, in, into the tuning on the memory. And the total inference time has been lasted just inside of um, eight hours on uh, 800 million of the, the inference workload to provide the best, to, to provide better experiences once the user trying to search on something. And for serving solutions, DeepDraw library um, is a Java-based solution. So you can integrate that with your existing services by simply import the package and, and use that directly. And, uh, and, and this technology has been used by the Amazon S team and, and also Netflix. So talking about the Amazon S use cases, uh, before that, there's actually a team came into us like saying, um, can you help us? Uh, because we really have a very critical task we want to solve. And, uh, and they want us to bring us solutions that can uh, run the inference inside of one millisecond. Because they're, 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 they're as query, they, 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 they require very low latency cost. And all the existing model service solution can now solve their problem. And they came to us and say, if, if, there's, a, if, if there's a solutions. And we haven't been trying on, on that beforehand, and we, we didn't know there are even customer asked like, like, like that as that. So we do the benchmark. And finally, the, the outcome is always surprised us as well. We finish all the tasks for their, 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 their model inside of 400 nanoseconds. It's like half of the millisecond. And they're also like very exciting about the, this result and now moving move, move to prod. So you, you, you can expect like uh, all the query when, when you're trying to search on the Amazon S, we, we, we run this we run this crew for services and bring you the, the inference re result by, by bring you the sponsor pro by bring you the sponsor product. It all came from from this kind of services. So um, so I would say that DeepDraw library is also very tough into the use cases if you have really tight budget uh, in your inference use cases. So that's pretty much about the deep drive library's introduction. Since time is tight, I won't have so much time to introduce our stuff. So if you want to check it out, please go to our demo page, uh, also our, our, our website.
And the Doodle Draw applications is also available uh, in the Google Play Store where you can try to download that and test it lo locally. And please feel free to tell us any problem you're having when you're trying to play with that application. So thanks for listening. OK, <clears throat> fine. So let's actually, OK, so uh, I hope my flow isn't going very quick in here. Um, so uh, is there any questions or anything? So let me try to bring up the questions. So um, basically, thanks, guys. Oh, how can I start a noble deep learning? Good question. So uh, basically, there is a solution that Frank actually posted below uh, above in the in the chat room. I will just uh, paste the link again. You you actually can make a start uh, with the with our D twelve D twelve book, which this book brings you the basic terminology where you can learn from scratch uh, for the deep basic uh, deep learning concept as well as the like how you can leverage deep learning inside of Java. So this book is still under development and we're hoping if there are more contributions there, it's actually welcome because we're open source and uh, yeah. Uh, and we, we only finished currently uh, like seven chapters and we're hoping we can finish all the book uh, uh, this uh, in, in this winter. So you will have a comprehensive like the first book that's been decided, uh, that's been defined in the in the deep learning world with Java. Um, How to use deep draw library with MX Tech comparing to use MX Tech Java API directly? Okay, so uh, I think I'm, I'm I'm the person to answer that question. So I'm I'm also the MX Tech Java author. So basically, um, comparing that is um, deep draw library is the second generation for the for for the deep deep learning stuff for the MX Tech Java and for MX Tech Java APIs. We, we actually brings too much of the old schemes, like you, you actually you, you, you're using a lot of deprecated fe feature inside. And also because uh, it's actually like a problem because we firstly define the MXS Scala API. So we actually building up the Java layer on top of that. And we, 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 we began to feel like the, the sick na nature for that is not very friendly for people to use. Uh, and also people find it hard to to do their memory management with the MX Java APIs. So beside of that, so that's why we're trying to leverage with the second generation Java part in here to bring up a better Java experiences uh, by having the deep draw library implemented in your Java API in here. So you you can think about that. So the so deep draw library with MX is actually bring much of the, 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 the features. We're using the same operators as Python use. We pro provide the similar NumPy experiences, and also it is support for both imperative and symbolic inferences, uh, which MXNet Java cannot bring. And the most important question is where we design to be very simple to use, especially on the on the map on, on the on the package management. Uh, before that, if you're trying to leverage with MXS, uh, MXS Java API is kind of painful, I would say. Uh, even their team saying it's, it's very hard to use. So we always spend too much, too long time to help people uh, to onboard with that packages. Um, so yeah, I hope that answers your questions. And the trade-off is, um, I always think there would be basically no trade-off if you're trying to use DeepDraw library. Um, it, it basically what's what uh, MXN Java API can bring deep draw library with uh, MXN can also bring that. So, yeah. 
and also it's in sync with uh, MXN MXN 2.0 with uh, uh, upcoming features that happened uh, by the end of this year. <coughs> right. Uh, any more questions from people? <sighs> okay, I will wait for another five minutes. So that will be the end of my session up that. So have you worked with pipelines of which pipelines you actually mentioned here? So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not quite understand. Uh, can you explain more about like the meaning of pipelines? You mean the Amazon Web Service pipeline or or some other pipelines? Oh, SK Learn pipelines. Uh, nope. Uh, the, the actual answer is nope. Well, we haven't worked so much on that. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely take a look on what is SK Learn pipelines. Do, do you know what are the key benefits by having that inside of Java? <coughs> So, uh, so talking about that, we also supporting for the uh, 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 for the honest runtime, which actually uh, bring us to import iSkeller model directly instead of Java domain. Uh, you can basically convert your iSkeller model into into the Java, and then uh, and then run the inference cases in there. So I, I would definitely take a look on the on iSkeller pipelines. Yeah. Okay. So thanks again for everyone. Um, thanks for your time, especially. I would say that's really hard for the people who is in the China region and also uh, inside of the West Coast because it's very er er early in the morning and very deep in the evening there. So if you got a chance to learn more, so and thank you everyone to join the session. Right. Thank you. Yeah, and, and if you have more of the questions, please feel free to go to our Slack room and um, I'm, I'm going to answer the question there. Um, so, I mean, to keep us connected because once I guess the session ends, there won't be any chance for us to actually see the questions you, act, you actually ask. All right. Okay, any more of questions? So yeah, so so pretty much this is the end of the session. So if you have, uh, uh, if, if you just lose your chance to get it through it, please go to, please join our Slack channel where we can answer the question there. And probably since this uh, session is also recorded, I guess it will also be uh, shared once the session's end, please mm, do, please do, do, do that catch up. And also go to our Deep Job Library website. We're also providing you like a 10 minutes uh, basic tutorial about what deep learning is. They have the similar con con content in there to understand uh, what, what, what we actually covered uh, in, in some of these cases. Yeah. Okay. So.
Um, thanks everyone. I'm, I'm, I'm going to close the session. And if you have more questions, please go to our Slack room and uh, um, Slack room. If you have more questions, or go to dgl.ai to understand more. All right, so see you guys. Bye-bye.